Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at recreating the uh, Scroobius Pip album cover for distraction pieces. Uh, before I get started on this I just want to point out the, um, the artist for this was David Marsh and he's um, pretty hard to track down uh, because I don't have a hard copy of the album, I only listen to it on Spotify. Um, I couldn't actually find out who designed this cover for ages but if you look in the uh, description um, to this video you'll find loads of links to his work because um, he's doing some really interesting stuff with um, Pantone um, images um, where he uses like little grids for famous album covers and things uh, so it's no surprise really that someone wanted him to design their own album cover as well so this is the uh, album cover that we're going to try and reproduce with our own image um, if you look at it very close up you can't actually make out what it is um, the real beauty of these images is when you step back and look at them from a distance you can actually make out the, the image underneath but when you look close up it just looks like a series of um, different coloured dots. So this is the uh, Scroobius Pip one and the one we're going to try and make is based on uh, this image of myself and eventually we're going to get it looking like this. Um, now this took me a lot of trial and error last night to figure out but it's um, it's actually pretty straightforward once you, once you get into the swing of it. So I'm just going to um, what's going to be the best way to do this? I'll just work on this as a separate layer, so I'll just delete everything that I've got so far. So once you've got your image um, that you want to Scroobius Pip eyes, whatever you call the effect, um, what we're going to do is basically the first thing we need to do is mask out a bunch of um, small dots that are going to be used for the colour. Now the the numbers and the sizes and the ratios and things that I'm going to use work very well for this size of image but this is the, uh, the bit that's going to take a lot of trial and error so I'll try and explain the thinking behind why I chose the brush sizes that I did um, and then you can apply it to a different size image um, you could still use these same size brushes that I use but if you have a smaller image um, the pips will be much bigger so anyway what I've done is I've gone with um, I made my own brush to begin with just to make sure I could get one that was exactly the way I wanted. Um, so if you look at your brush editor um, and there's a, a new brush button down here um, or an edit this brush button and then this is the create a new brush. Um, if you haven't got your brush editor you can just um, using this dock over on the left hand side or using any of the docks really uh, you can click on this little um, menu item that opens up the, the new tabs and just go to add tab and then choose brushes and then when you choose brushes you get all of the brushes that you have loaded in uh, GIMP 2.8 has some nice new brushes actually so it's worth checking out um, and then if you just want to make a new brush you just go to create a new brush down here and then you can set all of the different um, parameters of it here so the radius um, I set to 32.5 and the spikes is the default minimum setting of two. The hardness I set all the way up to 100, so it's got a hard edge rather than a fuzzy edge. And the spacing I set to 200%. So this says 20%, but I set it to 200%. So um, the brush that I'm working on is this one here. Uh, so there you can see it's set to 200. And if I look at my tool options, uh, you can see the rest. The size is uh, 32.5. Um, and that's all I need to do with that for the moment. Now, the, the tricky thing with this is getting all of the, um, the dots in a straight line. So I, I set something up to make this really easy. Um, the first time I tried it, I was just doing trial and error and it went all over the place. But what we're going to need to do is turn the grid on and then snap the brush to the grid. So to turn our grid on, we just go to um, View and Show Grid. And actually, before before I do that, I'm going to do one other thing. So I'm going to turn the grid off so you can see what I do first. Um, one of the things we're going to do is actually pixelize this image so that we get the um, just the flat color rather than the detailed colors that we've got here. So to pixelize it, we just go to Filters and Blur and then Pixelize. And that should bring up, there we go. Now I've set the pixel width to 32. Now, if you remember, my brush size is 32.5, and I've set the pixel width to 32. If I want bigger or smaller brushes, then I would also change the size of the pixel width. Um, so essentially, 
my brush is 32 with an extra half added on um, and then with the pixel width I'm just going to keep that 32 as well so if I wanted to double it I'd make this 64 uh, the pixel width 64 and I'd make the size 64.5 so that's kind of the only variable that would keep changing so once I've set my pixels um, to 32 and I'm happy with them uh, I just press OK and you can see the effect that that has uh, so if I just zoom in um, you can see it just makes a little block of colour for each bit so that doesn't make much sense close up but when you get further away um, it still looks like the image which is basically how this whole effect works so once I've set my um, I've pixelized my image I'm then going to go to um, view and turn the grid on now I've already set this up so you'll see that the grid for me um, kind of acts as a crosshair on each of the individual um, pixels that I've created, the 32 by 32 pixels. Um, the, yours won't look like that originally. Um, so what you have to do is if you go to image and configure grid, now you can see I've already got my grid set to 32 by 32 which is the same size as I had for my, um, my pixels. But what I've also done is I've offset them by half of the value. Um, and what that does is, if I just show you what it does without that, if I just make that 0 and 0, um, the grid matches up perfectly with the pixels. But I want it offset by half of it. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, so I just go back to configure grid. And this has to be half of that value. So if this was 64, then these would be 32. So it's pretty straightforward. So now we've got our grids acting as a crosshair within the pixel itself. And then the final thing we're going to do is just go to, um, I believe it's view, and then snap to grid. And what this will do is, um, it makes it much easier for your paintbrush to actually just find um, that part of the grid. You see, as I just move around very slightly there, it actually stays stuck to that crosshair. And that's going to be really, that's going to speed up this process for us um, a great deal once we get started. So when I zoom out, you can see it's actually quite hard to see all of the stuff that's going on here, but it's pretty straightforward once we get started. So the next thing we're going to need to do is create a quick mask, um, which is going to help us uh, make all of the little dots that we're going to use. So the quick mask can be activated just with this little um, square down here, or you can just press Shift and Q, and that will turn that on as well. And you should have this uh, red hue that goes over the screen. Then you're going to set your paintbrush color to white, which mine's already set to there. And then what you're going to do is just start off by clicking one dot on one of the crosshairs um, or one of the intersections of the grid. Um, I do it one in um, from the edge, just so the edge is going to be perfectly black afterwards. And then find the same um, pixel or the same intersection on the other side of the image hold down shift and you'll see a straight line draw itself and then just click once and you can see what that does is it automatically fills in all of those dots for us now the reason it does that so perfectly is because we've set the brush size to be um, basically the same size as one of these um, the distance between these intersections and because we've set the spacing to 200% instead of just drawing a straight line it just does a dot at each of the intervals that's exactly um, twice the size of the brush. So if we'd set it to 100%, you could imagine there'd be uh, one there and one there and one there as well. And um, I'll just get rid of those. Um, but at 200%, it gives us this lovely uh, line, which fits perfectly. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of this. And I leave a line because I don't want it to be like this. Uh, I don't want to have them that close. I'd rather have them like this. Um, so I'm just going to remember that as I go down. Uh, so I'll just delete these. So I'll just show you one more in slow-mo. So that's pretty quick. And you'll see the rest just sped up because it's um, you don't need to see all of this again. Okay, so that's all of my dots done. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually turn off 
this quick mask now and what that will do is it will turn all of these um, clear dots into parts of the image that have been selected um, so it's, this just basically works as a very fancy selection tool um, so once I turn that off um, you can see all of those marching ants which show the areas that we've got selected uh, I'm just going to turn off the grid because this is starting to get very messy looking so I just turn off snap to grid and then turn off show grid and if I zoom in very quickly you can now see that each of those dots takes up one of the the pixels that we've got before now the next thing I'm going to do is make a new layer uh, so I go over to my um, layer dock on the right hand side uh, if you've closed down your layer dock before again um, similarly to the brushes you can just configure the tab using um, the little menu item up here on the top right hand corner uh, go to add tab and then choose layers if you've lost it uh, but it should be there by default um, so I'm going to create a new layer and I want this layer to be black so because my background color here is black I'm just going to set this to background color um, and then I just press OK and that gives us the black and then what I'm going to do is on this black layer make sure I've got that selected I'm going to delete all of the parts that have been selected so I can do that very simply just by pressing the delete key and then if I press Control, Shift and A it will turn off the selection, it will turn off all of the marching ants okay I just had a bit of a mishap there um, I was supposed to press Control, Shift and A and I pressed Control, Shift and S which is a hotkey for my recording software to save it so hopefully this is still going to work so as I said I've got the the black um, foreground with the background is now the coloured pixelised image that I had before and if I press Control, Shift and A it will deselect all of the marching ants and that gives us the final image that we were aiming for what we can then do is merge these two layers so we can just press Control and M for merge and it's already on expanded as necessary so we just hit merge and then we can export this as whatever file type we want so once you're done you can go to file export and choose PNG or JPEG or whatever you want and that's how you make the Scroobius Pip album cover now as I said the the real beauty of this image is once you step away from it so if you give yourself a, a good uh, 5 or 10 meters um, distance from it um, you, you can actually still make out the image um, behind it so it's pretty cool um, anyway, I hope you found this uh, a useful tutorial. I've had a lot of fun making it, a lot of trial and error. Uh, I just want to remind you, please go and check out David Marsh because um, this was his idea and he did a really great job with this album cover and it's um, a really creative, fun thing to do. Um, so you should check him out, check out his Flickr page and maybe buy one of his prints. Anyway, thanks for watching.